This is Twit. Windows broke something with the with last month's Patch Tuesday, which Microsoft has now acknowledged. And my sense is that since this is a core protocol thing, uh, it can't be just me trying to get to one particular website that, uh, that's been having problems. So um, as we've been recently discussing, I often, like you, Jason, uh, well, you, you're a stronger uh, user of Chrome. I'm, I'm uh, fickle. Uh, so I, I'll <laughs> often flip-flopper. be... You, I'm a flip flopper. Okay. I'll, exactly. I'll often be using <laughs> Firefox. Uh, Firefox. Uh, I, normally, I actually have Firefox open statically in my lower left hand display. That's just kind of where it lives. Over on the right is Windows Explorer. In the center is what I'm doing. So I sort of had like reference stuff around me, and then I sort of have sort of a fixed layout for for where things go, like like what goes on which screen. Um, so it's been my habit to open up a Chrome session on, in the center screen when I want to browse around DigiKey for some random electronics gizmo, um, except that Chrome stopped being able to display DigiKey's site. It would, you know, the thing would spin and eventually complain that it was unable to obtain a secure connection or any at all. Um, and I mean, this has really been an issue. Uh, in the past few weeks, I've hit F12 to open Chrome's developer window to examine the exact error code that was returned. I thought that perhaps DigiKey might have somehow misconfigured their site. Because, I mean, again, I've used these guys for years and never have I had a problem. So I, so I remember I went over a couple times, actually, actually to Ivan Ristik's SSL Labs site and had them scan DigiKey, but it got top marks from Ivan. So it didn't seem to be something there. Um, and one of the more curious things was that Firefox never had any problem while Chrome wouldn't open DigiKey. Firefox but just popped right up in Firefox. But I wanted to use Chrome, and I couldn't. So it turns out it wasn't just with DigiKey, under Chrome, some over the past few weeks, other random sites all over the internet started having trouble. And since I learned a long time ago that things that I'm experiencing are likely to be widespread, since you know I'm not doing anything weird, uh, on, on a number of occasions over the last nearly a month, uh, I would Google Chrome connection errors or Chrome connection timeout. I mean, I figured other people would be like noticing this and, and having problems, thinking that Google must have broken something on Chrome that would therefore be affecting lots of people. Um, very much like they did break something with Chrome 77. Well, not actually they broke it, and we'll be talking about this in a minute, where we talked about how if you had the unupdated version of Symantec's endpoint protection, you were, people were getting the aw snap error from Chrome. Um, but anyway, uh, so as I said, as I was doing the research for today's news, I stumbled upon the cause. And I'm telling everyone who's listening in case anyone else has been like having like pulling their hair out with like the same sort of problem, not being able to use Chrome in certain instances. So here's the story. Un like, I, I don't know how Microsoft managed to do this, but they broke some, well, they added support that is enforcement for an enhanced anti man in the middle protection involving TLS handshakes, which immediately broke Windows ability to connect as a client or as a server to a significant number of the internet's websites. And what was interesting when I stumbled upon that was it was like this aha, because it perfectly explained why Firefox has continued to work because as we know, Firefox does not use Windows underlying security stack. It brings along its own. But Chrome does run on top of the Windows security protocol. So if 
Microsoft had done something to Windows, Chrome would be affected, Firefox would not be. So once I understood what was going on, I immediately disabled what had proven itself to be a not yet ready for prime time protocol handshake feature, rebooted my machine, though some reports suggest it isn't necessary to reboot, and DigiKey site popped up on Chrome with no problem. So Bleeping Computer, which is where I finally, it's the only place I saw this noted, uh, like in reading everything over the last couple of weeks. So hats off to them. They said uh, in their note, Microsoft has acknowledged a new issue affecting several Windows versions, and which is, yes, everything currently being updated, meaning 7 through 10 inclusive, that Microsoft says, or bleeping computer reports of Microsoft, could lead to transport layer security and secure sockets layer connections intermittently failing or getting timed out. Uh, and in my ex experience, never getting made in the first place. They said this bug is caused by the security-related enforcement for the, and then we have a CVE, it's 2019-13-18, TLS spoofing vulnerability, which leads to Windows devices experiencing failures and timeouts during TLS DHE dot, star essentially that that's all of the tls cipher suites involving ephemeral diffie hellman which is what the dhe diffie hellman ephemeral dhe stands for this happens only when the devices are trying to make tls connections to devices without support for the extended master secret that's the ems extension so what Microsoft wrote was connections between two devices running any supported version of Windows should not have this issue when fully updated. In other words, says Microsoft, if long as long as you have Windows, fully updated Windows at each end, at the client and the server, well, what's the problem? Okay, well, that'll, that'll solve the problem for everyone, won't it? Earth, Earth to Microsoft, newsflash. Not everyone is using your Windows operating systems at each end of the connection on the Internet, especially not on the server end, where IIS has been steadily losing steam and market share to Nginx, Cloudflare, and other providers through the recent years. So Microsoft's notice of this is headlined, quote, transport layer security, TLS in parens, connections might intermittently fail or time out when connecting. Yeah. And so I've got a link in the show notes to their notice. Fortunately, there is a registry tweak which can end this trouble by, by re-disabling Windows new and apparently misguided enforcement of this extended master secret handshake. I have a picture that I took of my screenshot of registry editor where I added two keys. You add two keys under, and I'm not going to try to go over it in detail, but it's they're easy to add for anyone who's comfortable playing with a registry as most, you know, veteran Windows users <laughs> have had to learn to be. Uh, it's under computer, H key, local machine, system, current control set, control, and then security providers. Under security providers is S channel in all caps. And there you add two D words, two 32 bit D words uh, for disable client extended master secret and disable server extended master secret and you set those d words to one and that turns off windows failing attempts to negotiate an extended master secret with the other end that doesn't know about that and uh, incredibly windows refuses the connection if it if it cannot if it cannot obtain this extended master secret negotiation 
So I just wanted to give everyone a heads up. I mean, the my my pain is over thanks to having stumbled upon this. So a huge and profound thank you to Bleeping Computer for pointing this out. Um, and who knows how long I and doubtless many others would have been stuck without Chrome working on sites that would that were would fail what is now an enforced handshake over on the client side and presumably over on the server side since there are there are options to disable uh, either the initiator of the connection thus the client or the acceptor of the connection initiated by a client so on the server side so again th this uh, it must be the case that Microsoft realizes whoops uh, this is not what we wanted to have happen and I wouldn't be at all surprised if next Tuesday we don't have this problem resolved at their end uh, but if anybody else has been beset by this I mean it's so the the protection would be nice to have this does this does solve a a connection interception man in the middle spoofing problem which TLS can have with with the ephemeral Diffie Hellman key agreement negotiation so it would be nice to have it but despite the fact that this has been in the spec for at least four years, I saw references to 2015 around. I didn't bother to go into big detail. But it's one of those things where, yeah, it'd be nice to have it, but it sure needs to, to fail gracefully. And, and again, I, I didn't – I had a lot of stuff to cover for the podcast as, as I as I was obvious at the beginning of the show. So I didn't spend time digging into this. The, one of the problems with man in the middle spoofing attack protections is they they tend to be subject to downgrade attacks, meaning that the man in the middle can if they're since since they're able to intercept the connection, as part of the attack anyway, they're able to say, oh, we don't support extended master secret. Sorry, which is to say that if the endpoints allowed extended master secret to be soft supported, which is to say only supported when each endpoint agreed, then the first thing a man in the middle attacker would do is claim not to support it, thus disabling it. So it, it does make sense that Microsoft wants to force its enforcement, but it's breaking the Internet. Hmm. So unfortunately, we're not ready for, obviously, for its enforcement. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but, you know, because Microsoft tried to bring it up and it broke a bunch of things for me. And I can't be alone in this. So, uh, we'll, as I said, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. And Microsoft knows they did this. They've got, you know, their advice is, oh, well, update Windows at each end. It's like, uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I, no, that's just not practical. Yeah, Sorry not about always that. an opportunity. Not, not yeah, always an option. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, uh, and less of an option moving forward as the world leaves IIS as right. the web server platform of choice. So it doesn't look like that's going to get... That's going to happen anytime soon. And I was curious, too, because I did go back to SSL Labs. I remembered that they showed what server, what the server the DigiKey had identified itself as using was. And now I don't remember. But it was some cloud provider web hosting platform thing. So it wasn't like Nginx. It was something that, you know, maybe there isn't that large a market share and so not that many servers are now in a position where they don't support it but i couldn't get to a website that i want to get to using chrome so that's not okay 